Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Don for Sioux Falls Southern Hills Church. I pray you're having a fantastic day. I am pastor here, and I am so glad that you are part of our online worship church service today. Today is November 1st, All Saints Sunday, and in just uh, a little while, we're going to spend some time honoring those who have gone on before us uh, during a special uh, recognition of, of this service. So uh, uh, stay tuned for that. But I just want to go over a couple announcements for this Sunday. Living Nativity Committee will meet this coming Wednesday. Um, we, we're pushing it back a week, so we're, we're, miss, we're, we're meeting this coming Wednesday. We're going to be talking about uh, how um, Living Nativity is coming together for uh, our church. It's going to happen December 5th, first Saturday in December. So please put that on your calendar and um, Ask God how you can help with Living Nativity this year. I encourage you to continue to uh, bless the church with your, with your tithes and offerings. Thank you so much for continuing the message of, of Jesus with, with the way that you're able to, to give out of what Jesus has done for you. So thank you for your financial gifts. You can give on the Southern Hills Give Plus app, or you can continue to mail those in or drop them off as Drop them off in the office. Uh, Sunday school. What's happening with Sunday school? I want you to know that our education team is working hard to put together a virtual Sunday school experience. That more information will be coming out about that in the uh, in the weeks ahead. So stay tuned for uh, Sunday school. I'm excited about that. Christmas Eve this year is going to happen uh, at four o'clock and 5.30, and then there will be a 7 o'clock pre-recorded service for you and your families. Uh, this year, we're going to be asking people to make reservations so we can be sure to get the right amount of, of people in our sanctuary and also leave some room for people who, um, who come to church, maybe for the first time. So uh, I ask that you would pray about Christmas Eve, and uh, I look forward to celebrating one of the most important moments of our life together on Christmas Eve. It happens on Thursday, December 24th this year. Uh, those are all the major announcements for this Sunday, November 1st. Thank you for being part of our online worship experience. Actually, you know what? I have one more. As I'm recording this video, I have the cross behind me. If you'll... Uh, take a look at it. Our youth intern, Laura Sherman, she's a junior at University of Sioux Falls. She's been with us for the last three years. She led a prayer, a night of prayer and reflection this past Wednesday night, and she had all the youth and leaders put a sticky note on the cross, uh, something that, that we are willing to surrender to God. So um, I just uh, encourage you, as you think about what you need to surrender to God, maybe put it on a sticky note and come and put it on the cross. The sanctuary that night was filled of, uh, of youth praying. There were stations all over the place, and uh, Laura and our youth leaders uh, are doing a fantastic job helping the next generation grow in our faith. Friends, have a great, fantastic Sunday. God loves you and is with you all the time. Bye. <clears throat>
Hey, what's up, everybody? Today is All Saints Sunday, November 1st, and we want to give honor and tribute to those loved ones that you have lost uh, over this past year. I'm going to be reading names here in a second, and there is a candle lit um, right behind me for each loved one. And after the name is read, you're going to hear a chime. Um, and with that, I just ask that you would um, remember how much you are loved by God and how much these wonderful people who God put in your life are loved by God, too. Uh, let's continue on with this service by recognizing our saints. Dallas Brost, father of Aaron Heupel. Leo Haas, uncle of Mark Heupel. Don Jarris, uncle of Jeff Jarris. T.J. Jensen, uncle of Danny Curtis. Theron Jensen, cousin of Danny Curtis. Gary Jones, uncle of Tanya Salzman. Jean Klein, aunt of Jeff Jarris. Jeanette Coleman, mother of Kathy Jacobs. Bev Laney, mother of Deb Laney. Bill Larson, brother of Jim Larson. Kathy Wagner Larson, wife of Jim Larson. George Lee, brother of Pat Schrader. Don Macrum, friend and past co-worker of Karen Congdon. Daryl Nelson, cousin of Karen Congdon. George Otten, brother-in-law of Betty Otten. Bob Otten, nephew of Betty Otten. Christy Otten, niece of Betty Otten. Wally Paschke, stepfather of Jen Pearson. B. Pitzor, aunt of Karen Congdon. Sake Tanaka, mother of Rohoko Colwell. Jean Thompson, sister of Jackie West. Bill Thompson, nephew of Jackie West. Troy Vasky, friend of Jeff Salzman. Don Watson, cousin of Jeff Jarris. Chad Weber, cousin of Miles Schumacher. Tom Weber, uncle of Miles Schumacher. Carlton Windsor Jr., brother of Judy Martin. Darlene Wood, aunt of Laura Peterson. Rita Zakharowski, wife of Dave Zakharowski. As we lift up these names, please know that uh, they have been a blessing to you, um, and they have been a blessing to God. Know that you are loved, and your loved ones are cared for, and they are resting in the arms of Jesus. In this broken generation 
Good morning, everybody. My name is Don, and I am so glad you are worshiping with us today. I am the pastor here at Southern Hills, and you are part of our online-only worship service. So thank you for being part of, uh, of faith, being part of, of something special today. May you know that your life matters and that God is with you wherever you go. I pray that today you and your families are well, and, and I just have to say it, it truly is amazing, <laughs> right? how fast the year goes. I mean, it is November 1st already. Where did September and October went? The fall here is, is well underway. It is upon us, and, and it's not going anywhere. It, it keeps getting colder and colder. I'm already looking forward to the warm temperatures that, that are going to happen in May. Cold, it, it really, I mean, for those of you who like the cold, who like the snow, I don't know how you do it, because to me, I don't get too excited about that. However, this time of the year that you and I are in, I mean, it really is beautiful. The leaves are changing, uh, uh, birds are, are still around, squirrels are gathering, and it is just a great time to be outside. My family back east, we have a, a cabin in uh, the Appalachian Mountains in Virginia. My great-grandfather in, in the 1950s bought 100 acres on a mountainside in uh, the Appalachian Mountains. And, and he, he built a cabin that um, my parents are actually remodeling right now because it's, it had a lot of wear and tear over the years. Growing up, I remember walking the trails. My grandfather cut up the mountain, and I was amazed of how huge the trees were. I remember in elementary school, I, I was walking in the woods with my, my grandmother, and it was so beautiful. It was, it was actually around this time of the year. It was so beautiful. The leaves, they were, they were changing. They were changing to, to bright yellows and reds and oranges. And, and I was, as I was walking, I was picking up these huge leaves that were bigger than my hand at the time, and I was amazed of how beautiful beautiful each leaf was. I remember taking those leaves back home, back to the cabin, and tracing them so I could have something to remember them by when they would wither away. Each leaf was unique and different. Every tree was unique and different, and, and, and I, 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 just, I just think, how boring would it be, church, if everything around us was the same? If every tree was the same, if every flower was the same, if every animal and every person was the same, there is so much beautiful, uh, beautiful diversity in nature. We just have to take pleasure in it. How boring would it be if everyone on this planet Earth looked the same, talked the same, acted the same? Church, you and I, we, we do something. We serve a God who is beautiful and diverse. So much so that each 
and every one of us is, is unique and different. And as different as we are to the person watching this service, whether we're by ourselves, we, we are, we're different from the person in our neighborhood. Uh, we're, di- we're even different from the people in our own family. And that is part of God's wonderful plan. We are part of his masterpiece. Sometimes I think we forget that, right? I think you and I forget that we are actually part of God's masterpiece. This week, I want you to do something. I want to challenge you to go out into nature. Go for a walk. Take a drive down to Canton. Go to Newton Hills State Park. Walk the hills of Good Earth or Beaver Creek in in Brandon. Right now in Sioux Falls at Tut Hill, there's some amazing hiking trails for you and I to to take part in. Now, the ash trees have the ash tree leaves have been down for a while, but right now there there's oak trees that are changing color and, and the maples, they're still up. Go outside and, and see and take part in God's nature. If you have an hour after work, or maybe when the when the kids get home from school, go for a walk. Go for a walk in nature, and as you walk, I want you to look around. Look at the trees. Look at the squirrels gathering. Look at the, look at the birds chirping. And, and, and notice the ponds and, and the streams and the rivers or lakes if you're by anything that, that has water, right? And give God thanks for this place that we call home. Give God thanks for bringing us into the world. Give God thanks for an opportunity to slow down, to put aside the phone, to put aside the computer, to put aside anything that that causes us not to enjoy God's beautiful masterpiece. It's so easy, friends, to go through our whole entire life and never enjoy all the great things God has for us because we are so busy and focused sometimes on things that have nothing to do with God at all. This week... I want you to take time and reconnect. Reconnect with God. Reconnect with the Father in heaven. And as you're taking a walk in nature, I want you to take a picture. Take a picture of something that that you find beautiful. And, And if you're on social media, share it. And don't share it to boast about who you are and what you're doing. Share it to share God's beautiful masterpiece. To share God's simple pleasures that you and I take joy in. Maybe, friends, you're not in a position to to go for a walk or even a drive, but you might be in a position to to go uh, sit on your front porch or back deck. This week, it's actually supposed to be really, really nice, so, so go outside, notice the trees, notice the birds going from rooftop to rooftop. They're still around, actually. Notice the squirrels gathering what they gather for winter and and take part in God's creation. If it's not cold, go outside. It's going to be really nice. Watch the birds fly. (laughs) I know that might seem a little boring, but you're watching God's beautiful masterpiece. You and I, we all need a slowdown. And something as simple as watching the wind blow through the trees It can be pleasing. It can be pleasing to look at how God moves through nature. You and I here today, we have to remember who we are and whose we are. That we sometimes get so busy and miss all the beautiful things around us. If you and I don't hit the pause button and take time to enjoy God's splendor, we can miss an opportunity, church. We can miss an opportunity to grow closer to the one who gives us this world to enjoy. Friends, God, he, he gives us this world. You know that? He, he gives us this world. He gives us our families. He gives us our circle of friends. He gives us our jobs. He gives us our careers. He gives us our homes. He gives us our hobbies. But more importantly, he gives us Jesus. God gives us Jesus. Without Jesus, you and I have nothing to hope for. Without Jesus, we will never know what true happiness is all about. Without Jesus, this is what we could do. We could live a life of what we think is happiness and get to the end of our life where we're passing away and we're like, man, did I miss something? I mean, did did I miss what this world is all about? Friends, everything, everything, everything is about Jesus. 
Everything is about Jesus. Today, if you don't know Jesus, and you've been coming to church doing the whole religious thing, and, and you've, you've held off on giving your heart to him, what do you have to do right now to give to God so he can reign in your life? Jesus reigning in your life is more than coming to church on Sunday mornings. Jesus reigning in your life looks, looks way different than, than being just a good person. Jesus reigning in your life means that when you wake up each and every day, give God praise no matter what condition you find yourself in. Jesus reigning in your life means that you go to Jesus with every part of who you are. Jesus reigning in your life means the love that you have for him extends to people, people in your family, people you don't know, people who you're neighbors with, people that, that you meet in the grocery store people that you work next to, people that you can't stand and find annoying. Jesus reigning in your life. It's more than just reading the scriptures. It's more than just praying on Sundays. Jesus reigning in your life means that your life serves God first before anything else. Friends, for the last two weeks we've been doing this series called The Doorbell. And as we continue today, I want to encourage you to go get your Bibles in your, in your homes, wherever they may be, um, or, if you can, or if you just want to listen, the, the scripture will be on the screen as well. We're going to be hanging out in the book of Matthew chapter 7, 24, 24 through 27 today. So let's read this. And as we're reading this, I want to ask you a question. Is your house sturdy? Is your foundation sturdy? Let's read this together. This is what the scripture says. Matthew 7, 24 and following. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew. And they beat against that house, yet it did not fall. <clears throat> it did not fall because its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. The word of the Lord. Growing up in Westchester, Pennsylvania, before my folks moved out to Elverson, PA, out into the country, we knew our neighbors uh, actually pretty well. To the right of us were Darlene and, and Joe Wilson and their daughter Kristen. To the left of us were Paul and Jean Benioski, who, and, and they invited us to church one day, and, and that's where um, my family went to church for a, a good, chunk of, um, good chunk of our lives. And behind us was the McCrary's. Uh, Nathan was a, a kid my age, and he had a sister, I forget her name. <laughs> and uh, in front of us, across the street, was this guy by the name of Rex, and all, his, all, all I knew about him is he had some really cool trucks, and he was constantly busy. And next to Rex was this little rundown house that my brother and sister were always a little leery about because it, 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 it was in rough, rough shape. When it came time for Halloween, just like yesterday, we, and we, when we were old enough to go trick-or-treating, my dad, he would take my siblings to all our neighbors and, and around the neighborhood. And, and as soon as we, we finished uh, at trick-or-treating at Rex's house, he's like, well, why don't we go up to this house? They got their light on in the front porch. That night, it was, it was dark, it was cold, it was, it was kind of eerie, and, and the wind was blowing hard through this person's trees, and it gave my brother, sister, and I chills. The, person, the person's home, it was, it was in tough shape. It was, almost, uh, it was almost like a disaster a little bit. It was that run down. The front porch was creaky as we rang the doorbell. And to be honest, we didn't know what to expect. After a few moments of, of waiting, uh, we, we started to make our way home and, and we hear someone coming to the door. 
at the door opens this sweetest lady that you could ever meet. She greeted us with a smile and some fresh popcorn balls and a pack of raisins. We each got a pack of raisins and a popcorn ball for Halloween from this lady. My brother, sister, and I, we, we really didn't know what to do with the popcorn balls. And, and I remember asking my dad, Dad, what are we, what are we supposed to do with this, this ball wrapped in, wrapped in film? And he says, well, you eat it. This sweet lady, as much, as much as her house was run down, there was something different about her that was pleasing. And I tell you what it was, church. It was her faith. It was her faith. She was a believer. And even though the foundation of her house was, was falling apart, the foundation of her faith was stronger than ever. Each Halloween, we then looked forward to going to her house because of the kindness she showed us through her faith. And we were always guessing, is she going to have popcorn balls? And every year, she still had popcorn balls. By the way, do they, do they still do popcorn balls? I mean, is that, is that still a thing? Well, anyway, <laughs> that was her thing. Church, our foundation... Our foundation in Jesus is everything. I want to let that sit for a second. Our foundation in Jesus is everything. Because of our deep roots, no matter what condition we find ourselves in, nothing can get in the way of our walk with Jesus. So let me ask you today, how is your foundation? Are you building your life upon material things that you can't take to heaven that will eventually wither away with time? Are you building your foundation upon the rock that is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior? During the 1930s and 40s, when my grandfather was growing up, my pop-up is what I called him, uh, he, he used to tell me that he would take uh, one of his biggest regrets was taking his baseball cards and putting them in the spokes of, uh, of his bicycle tire to make, cool, to make cool sounds like a motorcycle. Do any of you remember doing that? I used to do that with Dallas Cowboy. <laughs> Dallas Cowboy cards. Sorry for those of you who are Cowboy fans. Uh, I just didn't care for the Cowboys, and I just figured, uh, uh, these things don't matter to me anyway, so I used them in my bike spokes. He would tell me, my grandfather, he would tell me that he would use Babe Ruth cards Shoeless Joe Jackson cards, Honus Wagner cards. If you don't know who they are, they are famous, wonderful, excellent baseball players from the 20s and 30s and 40s. He didn't even think about their future value, which, by the way, Babe Ruth cards, Shoeless Joe Jackson cards, and Honus Wagner cards, they are worth thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars because they are actually so rare. And at the time, he didn't care. He didn't know what their, their value would be eventually. He just, he just knew that it made his bicycle sound really cool. Now, you and me, looking at this story and the value of a baseball card from the 20s and 30s and 40s, we can say, man, huh, oh, if only people knew then what those cars would, cards would be worth today, they would be filthy rich. For a lot of people... You see, it would be easy to think that the first. It would be easy to think that first, and I believe the evil one uses those kind of things to trick us. He uses the value of a home, car, retirement, vacations, and even our hobbies. Everything around us, it has a price tag. It all has some kind of value that increases and decreases over time. And friends, it is so easy if we are not careful to worship these very things that have nothing to do with the foundation of our faith. When the nation of Israel was freed, do you remember that? They were freed from oppression. They were out in the desert and, and they got through the Red Sea. They gave God glory and praise. <laughs> and right after that, when they were wandering around, they started complaining. <laughs> they complained. And they started to make idols out of their own possessions to form their own God that would do nothing. Possessions that would do nothing, that they thought was an idol, that they thought was a God. They made these things, right? And they forgot that God wanted their lives to thrive. God wanted them to prosper. That's why he brought them out of Egypt. In our own lives, church, do you know that God wants you to thrive? Did you know that God wants you to thrive? Did you know God doesn't want us to have any worries? 
He doesn't want us to have any heartaches. He doesn't want you and I to have any fears. Did you know that God gives us everything we need to put our trust, our hope, and dreams through Jesus, not and not the things of the world? In this rat race called life that you and I are in, there are millions upon millions upon millions of people chasing after things that have nothing to do with a life filled with following Jesus. There are millions upon millions of people right now chasing paychecks, filling their souls up with material things when God gives this world Jesus. God gives this world Jesus. In our city right now, and I guarantee with the technology we have, there are more people logging into their bank account to check their balance than there are people in church, people praying and reading the scriptures. There are more people checking the, the status of their money than, than checking the status of their heart. There are more people telling themselves right now, if I only had this amount or this is how I'm going to get ahead this week, this is how I'm going to get ahead this month and save for, for, for all these things that I want. Every single day, there are millions upon millions of people, good people, great people, hardworking people that have never been exposed to a life, to the life-giving relationship that you and I have of following Jesus Christ our Lord. There are people right now in our church neighborhood, people that have so many concerns, People that have so many worries. People that are in an unhealthy relationship. And, and, and as I say that, if you're like, well, how do you know that, church? There are people in our church neighborhood huh, that are in some very unhealthy relationships. There are people in our church neighborhood that, that, that are, are addicted to so many things. There are people in our church neighborhood that, that, are, that are being <laughs> maybe even abused. I mean, that happens. It's happening right now, not only in our church neighborhood, but everywhere. It's around us. There are people waiting for you to remind them that even though their circumstance is, is bad, even though that they may, might think that they're happy, they could have you coming to their door, reminding them that they are loved to give them hope to this life-giving gift that we have through Jesus Christ. This week, friends, I want you to search your souls. If you find yourself checking your bank account more than trusting Jesus, uh, more, than, more than trusting Jesus, I want to ask about your foundation of, uh, of your faith. I want to ask what you're building your life upon. If it's upon material things, I want you to release those and give those things to God. Build your life upon the things that Jesus has in store for you. Friends, you and I, we, we chase things all the time. And sometimes we, we build a foundation based upon our wants, our desires, that the evil one will trick us and tell us that they are our necessities when in reality the only thing we need is Jesus. The only thing I need is Jesus. Can you say that with me? The only thing I need is Jesus. I want you to say it one more time. The only thing I need is Jesus. Yeah, but pastor, <laughs> it's easy to say that, but what about this? Dot, dot, dot. And what about when this happens, dot, dot, dot? And, and, and what about all these other things? The only thing we need, you need, I need, is Jesus. Because huh, Jesus gives us everything we need. Jesus, right now, he's ringing the doorbell of your life. He's ringing the doorbell of your heart. And as you go answer the door, as you go and open the door, how are you receiving the Savior of the world? How are you receiving the Savior of your life? If your foundation is built upon things that have nothing to do with Jesus, 
we end up looking like the house in the scripture, right? About the man who built his house upon the sand. And the waves come. And the wind comes. And the rain comes. And, and, and it just crashes over and over and over and over and over again. I pray that your foundation of your life is built upon the foundation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the rock in our life. So that when the wind comes, when the rain comes, we are so sturdy because we keep answering the call. We keep answering the doorbell that's ringing on our heart right now. Friends, Jesus loves you. And may your foundation be this, may your foundation this week be stronger in Christ than it ever has before. Amen and amen. Bye.